Okay, so in front of us is a Sapphire Pulse RX 580. This card, unfortunately, is uh, not working, as you can imagine. If you come across my videos or my channel, hoping to get your graphics card repaired, I have a website now, www.techcemetery.com, link in the description. Um, you can send me a repair request through the website. Anyways, like all the broken cards we get, we want to first start by checking for a short on the base voltage rail. So I have my multimeter in continuity mode. If I probe something connected to ground, like ground itself, my multimeter beeps. So, start with, we're gonna check 12 volts and 3.3 volts of the PCI Express slots. So because this card has a fuse, we're gonna check after the fuse itself over here, and we're perfectly good. Now we wanna check 3.3 volts. Just to check 3.3 volts, we start at this notch and we go four pins left. Perfectly good. Now we wanna check 12 volts of the external um, A pin. So we again, check after the fuse over here. Again, not short. So now we wanna to go to resistance mode and check the power rails generated by the card itself. To start with, we're gonna check five volts. 5 volts can be found on an LDO over here at this tab, 1.69 kilo ohms, perfectly good. Now we want to check 1.8 volts. 1.8 volts can be found on the back actually at a set of capacitors over here on this side. So we're going to check there. Checking 1.8 volts, we have 3.5 kilo ohms. Again, perfectly fine. Now we want to go ahead and check the display rail. The display rail is um, over here, and this should be about, um, i say 11 to 15 ohms is pretty, pretty typical, but higher is not unusual, like here. So 25 ohms, again, perfectly fine. And now we wanna check the memory controller. So the memory controller can be found on this inductor over here. Um, this is again, usually pretty low, so 10 plus is what I expect to find. 27 ohms, again, perfectly good. And finally, we wanna be checking the memory. And the memory can be found over here on this inductor. So because we have micron memory, I expect to see something significantly higher than 20 ohms. And we have 33, which is actually lower than I thought it would be, but that's fine. So, since we're not short on any given power rail, we can go ahead and uh, power on the card and see what voltage rails we're missing. First, we're gonna start by checking 12 volts and we'll, um, to verify that the fuse is fine. So we're gonna check um, this side of the fuse here. 12 volts, perfectly good. Now we wanna check after this fuse again to make sure we have 12 volts. Perfectly good, okay? Now we wanna check five volts again at this LDO here. Five volts, perfectly good. Now let's check 1.8 volts which we have, and now the display rail, this should be about 900 millivolts, 900, perfectly fine. Okay, now we wanna be checking the uh, memory and memory controller, so starting with the memory, 1.6 volts, so that's um, a bit high actually, but it's okay, and now we wanna check the memory controller, and we have 950 millivolts, again, perfectly fine. Now we wanna check the V-core, found over here, these four phases, and we have one millivolt. Well, unfortunately that's our problem rail. So we have a card that's not detected due to a missing V-core rail. I should note that um, missing V-core is somewhat common on um, these RX 580s and 480s and all that. Sometimes it's a problem with the controller itself, but um, we'll have to work on it further. So if you don't know, the controller is an NCP81022. So like all the PWM controllers we get, we wanna start by checking um, two things. We, we wanna check enable, and then we wanna check the VCC or the VCC equivalent. So, okay, to start with, we wanna check um, VCC. So if you don't know VCC, is pin 11 on our NCP 81022. So in particular, we're going to be measuring a capacitor over here. I'm not sure how visible it is on camera, but that's what we'll be measuring. Again, it's connected to pin 11, so you can do a continuity check. As for enable, it's connected to a dual NPN transistor over here. So the idea is that um, when the card first powers on, 12 volts from the PCI Express slot um, travels through this resistor over here and tells the NPN dual NPN transistor to short enable for the V-core. And then when the memory voltage turns on, it passes through yet another resistor over um, here and then tells the dual NPN transistor to short the 12 volt signal shorting V-core, allowing enable to rise. So we're, we're first gonna measure enable at this resistor here on this end. Okay, first let's start by checking VCC. And we have five volts, high enough. Now let's check enable. And we have 3.2 volts, which is good. So we have VCC and we have enable, but we don't have V-core. Okay, so we have VCC and enable. And at this point, we could take a guess that the problem is that we have a dead NCP81022. And this could be true, but I should note that um, typically diagnosing PWM controllers is not this simple. You know, the V-Core has a lot of fault conditions, which can cause the controller to shut off the V-Core if it detects one of those fault conditions has been triggered. However, in this case, we can tell exactly what component's dead. And that's because this controller, despite how it might look, is actually short. I meant to say NCP81022 reads as short, not that it necessarily is the source of our shorts. Okay. As you can see, we're looking at the at a microscopic view of our NCP81022 um, PWM controller. So, I should note that for the, like I said, this particular card, um, we can at least narrow down a suspect as to what's dead. And one thing that's particularly useful for um, the cards that I've seen or heard about recently is that we can check for short 
of um, at pin 13 uh, or the VRAM pin for NTP81022. So for this, we would should be checking um, this resistor over here or this capacitor. And if we check this capacitor, we have a short. It's a 1.10 ohm short. And what this means is that we have a short at either the capacitor itself or our NTP81022, since those are the only two components it connects to after this, this resistor. I meant to say that those are the only two components after the resistor that are typically expected to go short. So anyways, at the moment, my guess is that the component that's dead is the NTP81022, based off the fact there's a bit of flux leaking on the, on the underside, and this is probably due to um, PWM controller going short and heating up. So let's go ahead and replace this and um, see if the car becomes any more functional. Okay, so as you can see, I took off the NTP81022 PWM controller. If we check for a short at the VRAM pin, you'll notice that we that we still have a short, actually. So at this point, it's probably just the capacitor, and I have to put this back on. But anyways, let me take off the capacitor, and then we'll check for a short one more time. Okay, as you can see, I also took off the uh, capacitor over, over here. If we now check for a short, you'll notice that we have that... Uh, it's no longer present, as you can see. As it turns out, this capacitor was a source of shorts. Um, I'm not sure if this one was also dead. We'll put this back on and see if the short's present, and if it's not, we'll replace this capacitor. Okay, as you can see, I put the NTP81022 back on. If we now check for a short on our VRAMP pin, nothing. Yep, nothing. So yes, this is probably just fine, and the source of our short was just the capacitor itself. So I need to go double check the value of the capacitor, and then we'll put it on, and I'll tell you what the value of the capacitor is later. Okay, so I double checked on an RX580 Nitro, not Pulse I should ask because I don't have a Pulse lying around, but um, apparently this capacitor here is 1.2 microfarads according to my multimeter. Um, I'm not sure if I trust that value that much. And this resistor is supposedly 6 kilo ohms out of circuit. So we're going to replace the uh, capacitor as well as the resistor just in case the resistor is damaged. And um, let's go ahead and do that now. As you can see, I replaced the uh, capacitor and the resistor. So the resistor that we were just replaced, um, the old one that was possibly damaged, it also read six kilo ohms out of circuit. So we can kind of assume that it was not damaged, but we'll just replace it anyways and we'll leave this one on the board. Anyways, let's go ahead and clean the card up and then try to boot it. Okay, so as you saw, I replaced the capacitor at the VRAP pin over here, as well as the resistor. The resistor um, was unnecessary as the old one was still 6 kilo ohms um, out of circuit, which is what it's supposed to be. If we now go ahead and power on the card, you'll notice that we have 900 millivolts. And better than this, we have a BIOS flash screen. There we go. If you're wondering why it looks corrupted, it's because um, my motherboard has a non-UFE BIOS, which gives it compatibility issues with some modern AMD cards. But otherwise, the card appears to be fixed. Let's put the cooler on and stress test it. Okay, so as you can see, the RX 580 uh, works without issue. It's been running game for about two to three hours, I think. Um, I think long enough. So as you saw, all we had was a shorter capacitor of the VRAM pins. I should note that for um, RX 580 pulses, or at least the ones that I've seen or heard about in the past month, this seems to be a relatively common issue. So I know, for example, in one case, um, when the capacitor of the VRAM pin went short, the V core, instead of being zero volts, um, it was 500 millivolts. And that was and of course the GPU wouldn't initialize because the vehicle voltage was too low. But um, like I said, if you have, let's say, one of these cards, maybe consider checking that particular pin for short, um, in case it's a capacitor or in some cases the controller. Otherwise, if you're wondering why my um, desk is in full view for everyone to uh, look at, it's because I now run an LC and I'm also now a Twitch streamer. So what that means is that if you send me, let's say, a uh, graphics card, laptop, or even, say, metal detector remote, I have one of, one of those in for a pair, um, I will look at it either live on Twitch or reserve it for a YouTube video. Hence the uh, fact that I uploaded my first Twitch stream like an hour ago onto YouTube and um, have my whole setup in view. Anyways. If my video or my channels have helped you out, consider um, subscribing to me on YouTube, becoming a follower on Twitch, or sending me a repair request through my website, www.techcemetery.com. And as always, I hope you learned something, and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.